So Julie, welcome to Girl Take the Lead. We're so grateful to have you join us and tell us about your book. And uh, we're looking forward to it. Well, good. I'm happy to be on the show and I thank you for the invitation. Yeah, definitely. So you want to introduce yourself to our listeners and tell them about your book. Sure. Um, I'm from Indianapolis and I've lived here most of my life. I've worked here most of my life. Um, I've been working for a Fortune 500 company and for 24 years, as a matter of fact, and also for two nonprofits and for the state government and for a trade association. That All that is over four, 30 years. And then I retired. And after I retired, I thought, well, what am I going to do with myself? And I had, while I was working, I would be, I would keep these notes of funny and different things that I observed in the workplace, interactions between men and women. And I decided then to compile them and put them in a book. And that's what resulted in the all up in your business, managing your business crap book that I wrote. And, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the book. It's really an eclectic and witty look at the interactions of men and women in the workplace as they deal with, oh, lots of things such as asking for a pay raise, working on a team, the ever popular office hookup, and um, working on team projects. Okay, so that's basically what the book is about. Well, it seemed that, I don't know, I got this underlying message from the book that we should all kind of have a sense of humor. Yes. I found that to be very helpful uh, because if, if not, you'll just cry. I think when you think <laughs> about all the, all of the trauma that you may be going through, but seriously, just ha having a good sense of humor in life is good for you in your home as well as at the workplace. Yeah. Well, I know definitely that um, any listener that needs a shot of humor in their maybe very frustrating day, your book would certainly be a solution for that. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> yeah. So um, I know throughout the book, you've got it kind of separated that there's some research that you did mm -hmm. and that you've got in the different generations represented in your interviews there. Was yeah. there anything that you kind of learned that surprised you? There was really nothing that surprised me. And the generations I had were Generation X, Baby Boomers, and Millennials. There wasn't really anything that surprised me. But one thing that's that I found to be, uh, I, I found this one answer to be really more forceful than I thought it would be. And that was a comment from a Generation X employee who commented on how the younger people um, have sort of a one and done, like the University of Kentucky basketball team, one and done attitude where they don't feel they necessarily have to put in a hard day's work because they're maybe gone anyway, have laptop will travel. And that really irritates her cohort, people of her age, but she was pretty forceful uh -huh. on that comment and got some nodding heads as well. Mm, interesting. And I know in each section, you have some fun cocktails that you put in, but yes. you tell our listeners about why you did that and what they're about. Well, um, I have nine cocktails, original craft cocktails that were created by two bartender friends of mine. And uh, I had been talking with them about my book as I was writing it and just to get kind of a reaction from them as I was going along. They are very good bartenders and they're very good mixologists. And so I said, why don't you guys create some drink recipes that are original and I can put them in the book and we'll give them business titles such as thinking outside the box and uh, networking, et cetera. So that's what they did. So they're in the book. And so did they match the cocktail to the section of that book? Like, you know, like what one should drink for that particular not necessarily. Area. I uh -huh. think I just tried to spread them out in the book so that we didn't have a cluster of one liquor versus another. And their their um, 
I think readers will find that some of them are somewhat similar to others, but they're truly original. I've tried not all of them, <laughs> most of them, and I had my favorite, but what, uh, what's your favorite? My favorite is thinking outside the box. Okay. And what's in that? It's a lemon drink. I love it. It's instead of using vodka and lemon, it uses lemoncello, oh. which is Italian. Uh, lemon liquor as I recall but that is very tasty it's nice and crisp and and it goes down smooth <laughs> well might be some of our listeners might get the book just to enhance their yeah. mythology right yes, <laughs> um, you also mentioned in the book um your muse right why don't you talk yes. a little bit about that and did it have a name did she have a name no, she did. Well, I've asked her twice for her name and she has told me to go mind my own business. But um, she is a two foot tall nymph like creature who is supposed to be on this earth to help me with my creative writing. Uh -huh. But she thinks her purpose in life is to go out clubbing. So we that ends up creating a lot of friction between the two of us, especially when I'm on deadline and need to get a, a story written but uh, so we have our tangles back and forth and she she's she's basically a smart ass if I could say that <laughs> she's basically a smart ass but she's very knowledgeable and she is my muse and that's why I have to keep reminding her and that's a part of you I mean would you say that for those who are trying to wrestle with this idea of a muse is it a part of you that you I see that kind of lightens you up and keeps you going yes i think so i think uh some who have read the book said that perhaps she's my alter ego mm -hmm. and um but she's she's almost like a human-like character for me she wears gaucho pants and a tube top so she's quite the fashion fashionista and um she may be my alter ego now that I think about it a little more. And when I wrote about her, she really came to life. Yeah. In the book, and I enjoyed writing about her. Oh, it was kind of cool to see how you wove that in and in the book. Um, well, you brought a lot of creativity to the book, a lot of different elements. You know? Yes, it's very eclectic. <laughs> yeah. No, it's really kind of, it's very entertaining. Um with all the advice that you've put in that book, what were the ones that had the most charge for you? Easily, number one was the good old boys club. Um, I, in my 30 years, I have observed that it is less prominent now than it was 20 or 30 years ago, but it still exists. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to younger employees. My sister is one example who uh, deals with upper management, who might say 90% males. And we talk about how women can rise to upper management levels. And there still is a good old boys club. And it's almost like tribalism that it, it may never go away. I think as long as uh, until there are more women in upper management who, do, who can pull other women up yeah um to higher management positions the other thing that i really um uh, liked to write about is mentors mm -hmm. they are very they were very important to me when i was working i had both male and female mentors and i can't stress that enough to employees to find a mentor work with them talk with them be candid and um try to help your mentor think of ways that you could benefit other teams and other departments so you get more exposure to those other managers which can help you rise up the ladder yeah well and would that advice be different at all for younger um generations or do no, you think i i think even more so it's needed for younger generations just because the dynamics of the workforce are changing so much now mm -hmm. with people working partly at home partly in the office so that that dynamic is a lot different and it may be even more challenging for them where a mentor would be very helpful mm -hmm. i know i always felt that when i had 
even just a work friend, you know, mm-hmm. or a mentor, you know, that it helped me stay centered and grounded yes, you know, indeed. with it, all of the things right going on. Yes. Yeah. Those work friends are, are precious. I think it's nice to have someone to talk to who, who can understand what you're going through and Absolutely. can offer some empathy. Yeah. I know that, um, some of them listen to the podcast. <laughs> some of them, it's so great to be that connected, you know, yes. still. Yes. I think that is part of the beauty of women helping women. Yes. That is a wonderful thing. Yes. Yeah. And that connection. Um, have you gotten any feedback from your readers on things that hit them? Yes. Um, one of my boomer readers um, told me that as she was reading my book, she sort of relived a lot of things that occurred to her in her career along the way and uh, found that quite interesting and funny. Most people have said, found the book to be funny, which is good because that's what I wanted it to be. I wanted them to realize it is written tongue in cheek, yeah. but I also offer good advice to employees. So the feedback has been that it's good. I asked a couple of men, I said, do you think it's too heavily tilted towards women? And they said, no, they found it also funny too. And so it would be enjoyed by men as well. Oh, that's great. Well, when we think about humor, I think humor, when we see ourselves in it, or we see the obvious truth that you're talking about, we relate to it and we all kind of go, oh yeah. <laughs> you know, and we can get a little chuckle and laughter from what you're saying. So right. maybe we're all seeing ourselves in those different situations, Mm -hmm. right? And they can relate to that. Yes. Yeah. Um, I just wondered if there was um, anything else that you want to pass along to our, you know, listeners and our younger generation listeners, especially given all of the experiences you've had and the, and the great book you've written, what, what would you say to them? What is the most important thing for them to take away? I would want to direct this message to females and say, when you do get a bump up the ladder, raise your, put your arm down and grab up someone else, another female too. Be, mm-hmm. be on the lookout for women who are struggling to get an advancement at work or struggling to get a pay raise find opportunities where they can work on a project where they could be a team leader and suggest that to their manager. So that way it helps women have more visibility within their job and can help them possibly with a pay raise or, or an increase in their position. Well, great. Anything else that you would like to pass along? I do. I want them to know that my book is available online at amazon.com and barnesandnoble.com. And I would appreciate it if people would, it's a short book. You could read it over a two hour lunch or two hour potty break, whatever. So just enjoy it. I think it'll be a lot of fun. And I'll have that um, information in the show notes for everybody too, so that they can link to it and find it easily. Um, so Julie, I think, I think unless there's something else we missed, that might be our episode. That's good. I, I enjoyed it. I hope it, the, re, the listeners found it interesting. Yeah. Well, I think um, the different elements and the creative elements you put into it, just make it most, a lot of, a lot of us are looking to be entertained and educated <laughs> at the same time, right? Yes, yes. Especially in this environment, it's just become so uh, I don't want to even use an adjective to describe it, but I think just the general mood of the country is, is getting very pessimistic and that's sad to see. Yeah. We had a very early episode. I think it's our first one. No, second one, maybe on humor and leadership and how important that is to have 
you know, to kind of neutralize the stress mm -hmm. a bit for people that we're leading and help them to interpret what is going on um, in a way. Yes. So I think you're a great reminder for, for all of us on keeping our sense of humor. Yes, indeed. Thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay.